Top of the morning. Good dog peeps. How you guys doing? Uh, Sean from the good dog. Nola morning. Last day here. Uh, see that? Check out that boat behind me. That's a big boat. Cruising down the Mississippi. Mm. I have to say I'm getting pretty, uh, pretty used to these uh, mornings on the roof. Little uh, check-ins. I think I could. I think I could get used to this doing my uh, my video check-ins from here. Anyways, wanted to talk to you guys about tone and how tone, your voice, can work for you and against you. How you can use it with the dogs to get better results. And if you're not aware of what you're doing, you can get worse results, right? So it's even breezy out here today. Man, what I do to surf this? God, it's a big boat. Just saying. Um, of course, Nola's going to send me off with like a nice, breezy, cool day, the day I leave. Um, anyways, okay, so I was working with clients yesterday, and uh, so there's a bunch of different bunch of different examples I want to share with you, but I was working with clients with the fighting dogs yesterday, and um, they did great. And um, the female owner was sharing, well, actually, both owners needed help with their tone. So what's typically what, what typically happens is you hear a lot of uh, a lot of owners will give kind of asking. Oops, I got a little sorry about that. I will thing flash up on my screen. A lot of owners will give like asking commands like down, place, no, right? Commands that don't have any real intent behind them, or if they're corrective tone, if they're if it's a corrective word, it doesn't have any intent behind it. And so, what I was explaining to them, train coming in, got a lot of action this morning. Um, it's the squeaky wheels you hear behind me. Um, and what I was explaining to them, and what I explained to all clients, is that. The softer your tone, as far as like the more asking, the less in, less intent, the less commitment behind it, the more you're going to find that you need to correct your dogs. And that's always a good one as far as motivating clients to change their tone, because I'm, they're like, well, I don't want to correct my dogs, so I'm like, yeah. So use a better tone, a more convincing tone, a more um, intent-based tone of what you're really looking to get and then you won't have to correct your dog because your dog hears your tone and your tone sounds believable. Now that tone is not an angry tone, it's not a harsh tone, it's not even really like a firm tone, it's just a believable tone, right? So it's like, for if you want a recall, the recall is the place where I typically allow clients to have like a lighter, you know, more, in, more kind of happy, engaged kind of thing, like, Francis, come, good girl, and then place and then it changes, right? So, and we'll talk about that in a second too, about changing your tone for different stuff. So, I'll let that be like, for recall and stuff like that, you can have that, but when you need your dog to sit down, place or something, it has to have a different tone. And once again, getting back to what I was saying about the corrective thing, I, I don't wanna get off this topic too quick. So, the less convincing your tone, the less intent behind it, the more your dog is gonna mess up. So they would say like, you know, they'd call their, the clients last night, they'd call, call their dog over and it's a place and then down and then the dog went down and then they would have to correct the dog. And even with a correction, that tone paired with it would oftentimes cause the dog to not respond straight away. And the reason is that the tone doesn't sound convincing. The dog is smarter than just like, oh, I know this command, and oh, I know what the correction means, but the, the dog's also reading the intent behind the human, and if the intent doesn't have any value behind it, the dog will oftentimes override the command and override the correction, right? So it's just a lose-lose proposition. So you wanna make sure that whatever you're asking your dog, hopefully this wind isn't blowing out the iPhone, um, whatever you're asking your dog, make sure that you use com commands or tone when you're when you're in interacting with them that actually conveys the intent that you want, right? So, if if you want to have your dogs, so if you want your dogs juiced, let's talk about this. If you want your dogs more juiced up, more amped up, then add more juice to your commands, right? Francis, come, good girl, sit, down, place, 
any of that stuff, that's gonna add more juice. That's gonna cause a more peppy dog, a more animated dog, and that may work for you if you're doing stuff where you want your dog to move quick and you want lots of motion. It will likely work against you if you want your dog to be calm and want your dog to be relaxed. So I talk a lot about like live and dead markers, but I also will use that as far as like, and, and that's in another post, so you'll have to like check that out somewhere else, but also live and dead commands, right? So like I was just saying a second ago, if I'm gonna call a dog to me, right? So I want a dog to move towards me, so then if I want that, my intent is I want motion, right? And then if I want a dog to go to place or down or sit, then I want no motion. So if that's the case, I'm gonna actually adjust my commands to make sure that they create what I want, right? So if, that, if that's my intent, I wanna make sure that I infuse my commands with that intent. So, Francis, come, good girl, place, down, right? So you notice the difference. So the first part creates motion. Francis, come, it's got some like nice juice to it. Good girl, good girl, brings the pep, gets the dog moving. Now, so, so I wanted the motion, I wanted the action, right? I wanted the pep, but now I want the dog to be motionless and I wanna make it easy on the dog to be motionless. So I'm gonna take all that out, take the gas out, take the wind out, out of the sails, take the gas out of the tank, take your foot off the pedal, something like that, right? So that's, that's a real contrast that will actually help the dog, right? So Francis, come, good girl, place, down, boom. So now we create motion, and then, boom, we take the motion out and we make it easy for our dogs to succeed with, boom, being still. So, now if you've got a dog that's amped up and out of its tree and like recalling and you at the speed of light and you don't want that, then it might be, Francis, come, good girl. Or, Francis, come, good, place, down. So the more amped up the dog is, the more, and if I need the dog to not be amped, the more I'm gonna take the juice out of the commands, right? And I'm really trying to make sure this wind doesn't like nail the iPhone and, and make lots of wind noise for you guys. And conversely, if I've got a dog that's really mopey or not interested or, you know, uh, like, oh, uh, like training is no fun or doing any of this work is no fun, then I'll, I'll add a little more juice to most of the commands, right? So, Francis, come, good girl place down good right so I add a little bit more of that stuff but I think it's super duper important that you guys recognize that the tone you use has so much value to it and it can do different things for you right so if it's not believable Francis come place down that's not gonna give you any value as far as your dog buying in or believing you, right? Which is gonna cause you to have to correct your dog to get what you're looking for. Because part of your brain says, I want my dog to do this, but what's coming out of your mouth is not creating that, is, is, is not in alignment with that, right? So let's make sure that we, that, we, that we infuse our commands with the actual intent that we're trying to create, right? You want motion? Create motion through more pep, more zing, more right? So, Francis, come, good girl, sit, down, good, right? That's gonna be more pep. You wanna take it out, Francis, come, good, sit, down. Or, if you want both, you want the zing and then you want the stop, Francis, come, good girl, good girl, place, down, boom, adjust it tweak it and if your dog is moving off of off of place don't you dare or sit or down or anything else they're not supposed to be supposed to be doing don't you dare say no no then you set your dog up to be corrected over and over again because your no has got no real intent behind it no value no believability and so your dog's gonna mess up over and over again because your dog's smart and your dog's gonna look at you and listen to you and go that person does not mean what they're saying so I'm gonna push, I'm gonna push. And then you're correcting with the e-collar. And then, or the prong, or whatever you're, whatever you're using, or spatial pressure. But you're gonna have to do it over and over again because you're not helping your dog by using correct tone that, that matches and equates to the intent that you want 
to convey to your dog. So I hope that helps. Um, use your tone to get what you want. Use your tone to convey intent. Use your tone to help your dog not make it harder on your dog. I know we all, we love our dogs and so we want to make sure we don't hurt their feelings or anything like that. But the reality is you're not going to hurt your dog's feelings by giving them tone or intent in your tone that conveys what you want. You're just going to help them succeed in the activities you're trying to get them to succeed in. Conversely, if you don't infuse your tone with the right stuff, if the intent, if, if, if your intent and tone don't align, your dog's going to struggle, make mistakes, you're going to have to correct them over and over again, and your dog's not going to believe what you have to say, which we, like, then we can get into the whole ripple effect of like, now you're not a believable presence, what else is that going to ripple out into, which is a whole other conversation, but I mean, that can like have massive, massive impact on how your dog just behaves in general as far as like just not seeing you as a believable presence so then your dog gets into all kinds of monkey business because the human being that your dog lives with doesn't have a believable presence so then your dog thinks everything's up for grabs right so with the fighting dogs last night I'll close it out with this with the fighting dogs last night the mom uh, is the main trigger because the the pushy bratty dog is her dog right the, the two dogs belong to the different owners but they cohabitate they haven't for a while but they're cohabitating and so the real problem dog is her dog and so she had to come with real believable intent for that dog to get into a zone of the world's not up for grabs and I can't just go lay that other dog out because I want to she needed to be become completely believable. So her tone had to be like, absolutely like, I mean, we worked on it over and over again. It was hard for her, but I really conveyed to her that if she would put the right intent behind it, she could actually create the reality she wants, which is non-fighting dogs, right? Not just that the tone alone is gonna do it all for them, but that's a big part of it. Like your presence, what you present to your dog, is talking to your dog constantly. Everything you do is talking to your dog, of course, but your tone is such a huge part of it. It really conveys a lot of our emotionality. So we worked extremely hard on getting her to be able to be like, place, down, heel, right? All that kind of stuff with real believable stuff. And her dog was like, mm, I got it. I believe you, I buy this. And the dog's demeanor changed dramatically when she got into a space of a more believable mindset and then more believable tone. So anyways, guys, that's it. I'm gonna wrap up. Got lots to do on this last gorgeous, beautiful day in NOLA. Wah! But uh, hopefully that helps clarify how tone can work for and against you guys. Um, if you have any questions about it, hit me up in the comments. And uh, of course, I'm always happy to, happy to I'm always happy to answer your questions and uh, try and help you guys out if you've got any. So, all right, you guys take care and uh, I'll catch you on the flip. See ya, bye.